Howdy, howdy, and welcome to Speak Easy Fitness. I'm Sean, and in case I don't know you in the wild, I'm a trainer, a coach, and I want to talk to you about an idea. I think of it as a Watu protocol, or why food journals fail. Still, already the burgeoning universe had brought forth life, and among the first, a race who quickly learned their vast powers were best served by observation more than action. Uwatu and the rest of the Watchers are Marvel characters that haven't really made it to the big screen yet. The Watchers are one of those super advanced, been around since the dawn of time species. But unlike their green clad counterparts, they hold to a simple creed, to observe and record, but never intervene. You might know their code by another name. The Prime Directive is not just a set of rules. It is a philosophy, and a very correct one. Starfleet and the Watcher's Council are essentially anthropologists. They come to study, observe, and understand a civilization's culture. Whereas, less woke aliens can come as missionaries who evaluate a civilization and impose proper values on the uncouth natives. Or, conquistadors who enslave, exploit, and eradicate a civilization and its resources. Don't blame me, I voted for Kodos. Go! Of the three types of alien visitors, I vastly prefer Uatu and the observers to the alternatives. But, as Uatu's and John Luke's frequent interference suggests, observation without evaluation is tough work. Indian philosopher Jita Krishnamurti said that the ability to observe without evaluating is the highest form of intelligence. The difference between observation and evaluation is the difference between the missionary and the anthropologist. The anthropologist is a scientist. The scientific method requires us to make and record observations without cognitive bias to understand the phenomenon enough to build and perhaps test the theory of the case. That type of observation is missionary impossible. The missionary comes to educate and instruct the population of the true way and its benefits. And for those who don't comply, Redundant vessels are recycled, mulched, and converted into fertilizer, whereupon they are returned to the Earth to promote verdancy and growth. It is a highly efficient means of organic renewal. It's no coincidence that missionaries and conquerors are historical travel companions. So, in our own lives, do we come to ourselves as missionaries or as anthropologists? Are we observing or evaluating? The difference between observation and evaluation is deceptively simple. An observation is a statement of actions, whereas an evaluation is a statement of being. It's the difference between saying the Millennium Falcon made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs and saying it's a piece of junk. junk. The observation deals in measurable numbers and actions. I'm expressing the measurable speed of the Corellian freighter, although my units are a little off. The evaluation is a judgment. I can't show you numbers that prove the Falcon is junk because junk is a subjective term. One's trash is another's treasure, after all. A parsec, on the other hand, is a measurable unit of distance. And perhaps time, depending on your galaxy. So remember, observations are measurements. Evaluations are junk. Welcome, research assistants. If you turn your attention to the monitor, you will see that our subjects are waiting for the experiment to begin. But it's actually happening right now. Let's try a thought experiment. If we were to study another person, for the sake of science, how would we know if they were happy? They may look happy, but we still wouldn't know what they were feeling. We couldn't make that evaluation. We could record their actions, their total time spent smiling, laughing, dancing, but those observations can't prove a feeling. We can't truly know another's mind. Yet. This gets really tricky because we assign values to our actions. Marla smoked 37 cigarettes today is an observation because it is a measurable representation of her actions for that day. Whereas Marla is a smoker is an evaluation. Is identifies whatever it's placed after. We are identifying and evaluating Marla as a smoker, not observing. See what I did then? You hypnotized him. No, I used this. This is the most important piece of equipment you will ever own. This notebook has saved my skin more times than I care to mention. When we keep any kind of log or journal, we're attempting to observe and record our actions. We want to be anthropologists, studying, observing, and hopefully understanding our behaviors and habits, not evaluating them as good or evil. That's especially tough with food because we've been moralizing food since the days of Abraham. I remember when eating meat on a Friday was supposed to be a hell-worthy trespass. 
It's a cross-cultural phenomenon with different restrictions for different people in different places at different times. What if they're eating in an airplane and they cross a time zone? I mean, it's always midnight somewhere. <laughs> Even modern fitness messiahs preach the virtues of clean eating. They condemn the adultery of cheating on our diets, and they charge a tithe for penance, confession, and indulgences. But we don't have a covenant with Whole Foods. And we didn't marry Trader Joe. Eating is not a moral exercise, and a calorie count isn't a thetan level or a good place score. It sometimes feels like it is. A food journal can feel like a confessional. When we put our actions down on the screen or paper, and there's a reckoning of sorts between who we think we are and what we're actually doing. And when we get measurable proof of actions that don't align with our identity, that can be jarring and hard to square. So maybe we don't write about the baked goods. We lie. We commit one fitness sin after another until the shame of it drives us back to the bakery to punish ourselves. Maybe we believe that we deserve it, but an act of caloric flagellation is not contrition and it won't absolve us. Science is our candle in the dark of a demon haunted world and observations are the fire that can spark a scientific revolution in our way of thinking. When we're journaling our observations, we are recording measurable units consumed at specific times. A journal entry isn't an evaluation. It can't be. It's a snapshot and you're a moving picture. And we wouldn't evaluate the Lord of the Rings from a single frame. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't. They kept going. Keeping a journal is building a new behavior. And one of the basic tenets of behavior change is to make adherence as easy as possible. So, what if we journaled with an app that we were already familiar with? Maybe one that we've already posted meals to? If you're curious to see what a quick and easy Instagram food journal looks like, you can find mine at Live Food Journal. I took a snapshot of everything I've ingested besides water for the last few weeks, and I'm kind of hooked. The InstaJournal leverages an app that Facebook's top engineers have designed to be easy to use and beautiful to look at. I've been keeping food journals on and off since Bush 43, and this is the most I've ever enjoyed it. It's a free option that leverages Instagram's ease of use, our familiarity with it, and it can be as public or as private as you want. These journal entries are literally snapshots of your moving picture. If we put enough of them together, we may see a pattern. We may become more mindful of our behaviors and therefore have a better shot at teaching ourselves new ones. Sure, Instagram won't give you as much information as a dedicated nutrition app will, but remember, we're trying to make this new behavior as easy as possible. We can always add complexity later. For now, the goal is just to observe. A Watu protocol. I'm encouraging you to be more mindful with your observations, with how you watch. And I thank you for watching this. So until next time, I'll see you at the speakeasy.